Hi, my name is Karen Boniker, and I'd like to introduce you to a new brush pack called Pastels for Corel Painter. If you work with traditional media the way that I do, I'm always looking for brushes that emulate the traditional media painting experience. So the closer I can get with a brush, the better. With these pastel brushes, you're going to find that they come very, very close to working with real pastels in the way that they apply the paint, the way that they blend, and the way that they pick up texture. So let's go ahead and go through the first brush called Blocky Pastel. And I'm just going to pick a color here and lay down a few brush strokes and you can see that this is more what you would get in maybe a, a blocky type pastel crayon and I'll put a few other colors here. I also love the way that the colors kind of intermingle and mix. There's a couple of things that you'll want to uh, work with uh, in terms of the property bar when you're working with any of these brushes. One of them is the grain setting. So if I take that grain setting down a little lower you can see that I'm going to get lots of grain and as I bring the grain setting up higher you can see that the grain is softened and the brush becomes more of a creamy type pastel with less uh, paper texture. As if you were working on um, a very, very cold press type of paper where there's not much uh, grain coming through in the paper. The other setting that's important to notice uh, is the opacity, which you can bring up to create a more saturated color and we'll go ahead and pick a color here and do that. And then all, uh, the bleed setting. Now the bleed controls how much that brush smears with the underlying color. So if we bring this down to a lower setting, we're going to get a much more vibrant color coming through, as you can see here. You can also control the shape options of the brush, and all of these brushes are going to be the same, so you'll want to experiment with this by applying dab stencil and picking up a paper that in, the, in this case it happens to be the um, sandy pastel paper and remember that you can choose the random grain rotation on your papers panel and that way um, you can get a very very interesting texture uh, as you lay down the brush strokes. So the first brush is blocky pastel the next brush is called Brushy Blender, and I'm going to go back to the Brushy Pastel, or the Blocky Pastel, and lay down a few brush strokes here in different colors. And we'll go to the next brush called Brushy Blender, and a lot of times when I'm working with pastels um, that are, tend to be softer and more powdery pastels, I like to actually pick up a brush like a watercolor brush and use that to blend my pastels and this is exactly what this brush does so um, it has a very brushy look to it so it's going to blend your pastels with a very brushy uh, appearance so it's as if you were just taking a brush and blending those colors with uh, an actual paintbrush the next brush is hard and soft and this one again you can set to apply dab stencil based upon paper or you can take that off and get a very flat look okay so in terms of using this brush firm pressure is going to give you lots of saturation and soft pressure as you can see gives you a, a grainier softer effect so this is a nice brush to use in combination with um, when you're trying to create different effects, maybe in a landscape painting where you need um, maybe mountains and then you need some paper or to show some texture in those mountains and you can do that by just using very, very soft pressure there. So that brush is hard and soft. The next one is oily pastel and this one is exactly what it says. It's a very, very oily type of pastel brush 
And again, the same attributes are going to apply here. Your opacity, your bleed setting, if you bring that down a little lower, you're going to get um, a more saturated color and less bleed to the colors below. Okay, so that would be how you would control that one. Again, it apply, you can apply dab stencil and work with texture. Oily pastel. Pan pastel. For anybody who's used pan pastel before, and I'm going to just go to this sandy pastel paper. Pan pastel is a powdery pastel that's applied with brushes and certain types of nibs uh, to create a very, very, very soft effect. So when I use these brushes, I'm looking exactly for that very, very soft, powdery appearance. So I'll make a brush nice and big here so you can see how this lays down color. And again, your bleed setting, if it's too high and you don't want as much color coming through, bring it down to a lower setting and you'll get much more saturated color coming through. And this is Pan Pastel. Pastel Leaves is a, a landscape brush that you can use for creating leaves on trees. I'm using it quite large here so you can see the actual dab. And again, you can use it with different colors. And you can use it at a smaller brush tip size uh, to create very full effects of trees and the leaves on trees. The next brush is called Pastel Stub. And it is a nice um, brush for creating uh, soft edges. You can use different colors here to show you kind of how this works. And you can definitely use it at different sizes. It's a really nice brush for just creating kind of sketchy marks. Again, you can apply dab stencil to it and use texture. There's a good example of some texture laying down. And this brush is Pastel Stub. The next brush is Pointed Pastel. And this one is a very, um, I, I like this brush quite a bit because it's very sketchy. Um, it's a good brush for laying down your initial sketch if you're um, you know, starting a painting, starting a drawing. So very expressive brush marks. Again, it does um, pick up dab stencil, so you can use any paper texture. Just take that off if you want a uh, softer brush. Again, it has a reset and bleed setting, opacity and grain setting so you can control all that right from the property bar. That's pointed pastel. The next brush is called Real Soft and again it's a pastel brush and it is very soft and fluid. It does not have uh, shape attributes applied to it although you can apply either paper or flow map if you want to pick up a flow map to create a texture with as well. And it's very soft and fluid. The next brush is Senelay, and it's based upon um, the wonderful French pastels that um, we all covet if we uh, work with pastel brushes. And uh, this one, again, is just a very, very traditional pastel brush, good for initial drawings, um, very good for laying color down and overlaying of color. So if I lay color down this way, take another color over the top, it has a very um, opaque effect, very, very traditional in terms of the way that it um, lays color over the previous color. So it's one that I really like working with. You can see how the color kind of comes through there. Use a bigger brush here, show you a few brush strokes. 
So very, very nice in terms of um, opacity, texture, and the way that the brush lays down color. One of my favorites. The next brush we'll take a look at is the Shading Pastel. And let me pick a nice color here. Um, this one is a really nice brush for um, putting in shading marks. It has a reset setting so you can bring the reset down and get a soft blending edge as well. And you can also bring that bleed setting down a little bit too so you get even a softer effect. So remember the reset setting is important on these brushes as well. Most of the brushes um, with reset settings, um, when set to zero, you can create some really nice blending. That's Shading Pastel, Variable Pastel Cloud. And let's go ahead and reset that brush. And let me pick a color that you can see clearly here. Um, this is a very, very soft pastel cloud brush. So as I start putting different colors in here, you can see how you can build and create some really interesting cloud shapes. The bleed setting is pretty high, so if you bring that down to a lower setting, you'll get more saturation coming through. By nature, um, pastels bleed quite a bit, so... You can also use this brush at a smaller brush tip size. So if you were looking to create um, a distant cloud here. You know, maybe use it at a smaller size. And the most important thing I can say about this little cloud brush, pastel cloud, is that firm pressure again is going to give you that hard, saturated effect. And then to soften the edges, just use very, very soft pressure, maybe even a little bigger brush and you can go into those edges and soften them down. One of my favorite brushes. So firm pressure and soft pressure to soften the edges. Okay, and that's variable pastel clouds. The next brush is Variable Pastel. And this one uh, takes into account, um, again, grain. So you can control the paper texture that you're using and the effect that you're getting. And this one um, I really like using for overlaying of colors. So if I'm doing a, a, a beautiful pastel sky, for example, I would, you know, maybe work with a little larger brush and if I'm doing a sunset, for example, I would really like using this brush at, you know, a bigger size and then just bringing different values of color in purples and oranges and yellow and you can see how that color just kind of bleeds through. It's really a beautiful brush. Lots of texture but I love the way it just those colors just kind of come through. Very transparent, very traditional. And that is Variable Pastel, one of my favorites. Wispy Blend, we'll reset that brush, is a blending brush. 
And we'll, again, we'll just use that to softly blend. I'm going to add a layer here. Do this blending on a separate layer. You can see how that just softly blends the edges. And it's a very wispy type of brush, so it'd be good for, um, again, for uh, if you're doing um, a, a sunset and you needed to blend out the colors. I may uh, I'll mention also that wispy blend. If you bring the reset up, you can use it as a brush, and then back to reset zero, and you can blend. Our painter brushes are so versatile in that way. Okay, Wispy Blend. The last brush is called Wispy Grain. And this brush is uh, a really more of a grainy type brush where you're looking to get um, different kinds of grain and effects into a certain area. Um, again, the shape attributes, you can apply dab stencil based upon paper, flow map, or texture. And let's pick up something really strong this time. And maybe this one called Thick Verticals. And you can see how we can get some really strong texture coming through. So these are the pastel brushes for Corel Painter, and I really hope you enjoy them as much as I have. Take care.